What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Buenos noches, buenos tardes, buenos dias, benvenue, guten tag, you know, all, aloha, all the good stuff's going on with you and your life, how you guys doing, you know who this is, and today I'm going to give you another one, so let's... Stand by, because it's about to get real. Today we're going to talk about a topic, a subtopic of nigga logic. Now I'm going to talk about nigga logic, so I'll get to that, but it's a subtopic of nigga logic. We're going to talk about stuff this right here. We're talking about black on black crime. And when all, and I know the, 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 the coons will be out for this one. And you can read the meme right here. Let you guys take a minute to read that. Like it says, marches on your behalf, or not, not, not with the big shots. But let's go. Okay, black and black crime. Black and black crime. Yes, it's gone down, but unfortunately, a majority of us do not like to talk about that. You want to know why? Because nobody. Here's the way I put it. I'm in. I'm in a couple groups on Facebook. And they want to argue about this. And I'm, and I'm like, look, man, nobody's going to take you guys credible unless you talk about this, unless you at least acknowledge it. Nobody wants to acknowledge it. You want to know why? Because they're too worried about McWhitey. Now, let me tell you folks something. The white folks are not worried about you like you think they are. They're not. Like, understand what the police is doing. understand all that. But the average white person gives two fucks about your life. You want to know why? Because you're not doing nothing. A lot of you are just on Facebook trying to be models, trying to be wannabe rappers, and you're not doing nothing with your life except so collecting checks behind the scenes. Don't act like we don't know. But the, the average white person gives two fucks about you. And that's your biggest problem. You worry about what they think about you, and they don't care about you. Now, we were talking about this topic, and they were like, well, what about police? I said, look, man, I, the average black family, and this is the majority of blacks, this is the majority. This isn't the ones that are the loudest. This is the majority. Majority of black people want neighborhoods safe, sound, and productive. That's what they want. You can say whatever you want. This is what they want. This is what they're proving. When Giuliani did his thing, guess who was one of the groups that congratulated him? The blacks are living in the hoods. When he started cleaning up, well, outside of Brooklyn, because he, he did like they threw away there. But uh, back to the point. Whenever he started cleaning up all the hoods, the black people thank Giuliani. Why do you think that? Because they can walk around. You, you, well, even now in Brooklyn, look at look at Harlem. You can walk. You, look at look at Brooklyn. Look at look where the look where the Nets play. Back in the day, you didn't have no white folks walking around hoods like that. Now you do. You want to know why? Because they make the neighborhoods safe, and like they're not letting they're letting they're letting this, a lot of this black on black crime pass anymore. But what it was is they, they addressed it, and then look what happened. The problem in the black community is you don't want to address it because you want to know why? Because you have to admit that this is a problem. But you don't want to admit that it's a problem. You admit that there's a gang problem, a drug problem, a, 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 a poor literacy rate. When it comes to black on black crime, you're like it's like a, like a unicorn or something. Like there's a horn on its head. And then you'll start to say, well, what about white on white crime? Look, you can't focus on one topic. Don't talk about two. We're focused on this. I'm not focusing on white on white crime. I'm focusing on black on black crime. If you can see, if you know what the difference is, you're in the conversation. If you don't know what the difference is, and you're trying to deflect the issue. Stay in your lane. There's a reason why. There's a reason why you, there is a little bus in life. I hate to say, a lot of you rode this bus. I can see, because like I said, they'll say or the ops like the, you know, like the NAACP, Urban League. They will they'll address it to a point. But they know they've got Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, media tap dancers will come in and don't want to address this, so they don't really talk about it that much. But at the end of the day, we got to do something to stop, like I said, I, for me to worry about somebody else's house, my house has to be clean. My house has to be, it doesn't have to be spotless, but it has to be clean. If I'm going to worry about Johnny's house next door, I can't worry about Johnny having garbage all over his house, if, like outside his house. Maybe he got garbage thrown all over the yard. You know, he, got, he lets his dogs run loose, whatever he does. Uh, I'm not saying that about any of my neighbors, by the way. I'm just making that an example. But, but if he does that, I, I can complain, and not, I may not like it, but if the inside of my house is filthy and, like, dirty, I can't say anything. 
I gotta sit there and take it because this is because his is on the outside, and mine is on the inside. It don't change the fact that it's filthy and dirty. Now, if, I, if my stuff is clean, then I got a problem with John. I can go, oh, look, man, you gotta do something with this. But at the end of the day, I gotta worry about my house first. Then I'll go to your house. A lot of you don't even worry about your own house, and that's why the house is in shambles and come down. A lot of you don't understand what to do anything. Like I said, I'll go back to my previous videos. The majority of black people want safe neighborhoods, but there's that minority that sounds like they're the majority. They're the ignorant ones that always want to preach about, oh, the white folks did this, white folks did that. They won't let you do anything. I can see why you guys think that, because you guys are so ignorant and stupid, you won't try. Like I said, Dr. Umar is building a black school, an all-black school, and all of a sudden you guys are saying they won't let you do anything, which contradicts what you guys are saying. The fact of the matter is, it's not like they won't let you do, it's what you don't want to do. You don't want Umar to open that school because you know he'll be successful. You don't want black people to get ahead further than you because you're ignorant, and, you're, and your ignorance overshadows your arrogance. And that's what I can't stand. I, I can see if you knew what you were doing, but I, I, I can see if you guys were stupid. I mean, you're stupid too, don't get, that, don't, don't get me wrong. You're stupid. But your ignorance overshadows all this. Cause you wanna, you wanna, you don't wanna address the problems in your uh, the hood first. Like if I, I can't address the problems in somebody else's neighborhood, if my neighborhood's all fucked up, excuse my friend. Sure, I can say something, but I'd be a hypocrite. But look at all that. Look at the dirty, their dirty hood. They got drug dealers, prostitutes. They got homos everywhere. This and that and the fifth. But if my, if my, if my neighborhood's the number one in the city in crime, what, what, what sense does that make for me to bitch and moan about somebody else's neighborhood? It don't make no sense. And that's the problem. That's that's a part of nigga logic. This is, people really think that this logic is, is is like factual. All you do is get yourself laughed at, because nobody can take you serious. I can't take you serious. So that's why they invent Facebook. Because here's a problem I see a lot of people on times on Facebook. Facebook gives people with a false perception. That nobody's gonna challenge what you say, and a lot of people aren't used to being challenged to what they say. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of you for for a fact. Uh, there, somebody, you, when you get into confrontations, you want to call me names. I understand that. I mean, even that's that's, that's stupid. I understand what you're doing because where you're from, people let you slide with your dumb common sense. People say, "Oh, that's just all. Let it go." He's just talking, you know. This and the third. Well, if you're gonna bring your your stupid, arrogant opinion out to the pub, like out to the public, I'm gonna call you on it. I have no problem getting my stuff called upon, but you know why? I rely on facts and common sense. And with facts, you sure ain't fucking with me. And that's the problem with a lot of you people. That's why a lot of you people get mad at me, because I can back up what I say. And a lot of times, like right now, it's going off the top of my head. You, you can't say I don't know what I'm talking about, because I lived in the hoods. I lived in the, the country. I lived in the suburb. I seen it from all aspects. I was born, I was born in one of the worst neighborhoods in Brooklyn. Back in the day, it was it was at least top three. I was born in Crown Heights. Then I moved. Then I hung in like the worst neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Homewood. And then, like I said, I moved. Now I live where I live in Columbus. When I first moved, I moved, I moved to the worst project because I and then I, I lived in the worst neighborhood there. I mean, man, I've seen this. It's not like I'm, I'm like blind to. It's not like this is a coincidence in all three spots that that's how it was. That's how it is in all the spots all over America. No, everything, nothing is the same. But the everything's the same. But the name. That's what I wanted to say. There you go. Use that by the way. Nothing. Everything is the same. But the name. And then you got these black folks saying, "Oh, well, what, what, what about white on white crime? If you're so worried about white on white crime." Go down and help out. No, um, go down and help David Duke. I'm sure he'll appreciate the help you're giving him, because you're already cooning now. You can coon more with him. You people are the real coons. You people want to tap dance and, especially when you get confronted with your logic, you want to tap dance and oh, start playing the shell game with me. Well, here's your problem. You're playing the shell game against a person that knows how the shell game is being played. Like you get on Facebook, and I can't believe you guys actually believe on Facebook that you can get away with just common sense and logic, which you think is common sense and logic. At the end of the day, get some books. Go on the internet. Do this. Do whatever you have to do. This, this, this be more prepared. I gotta go. Like I said, I could, I could make this video probably long, 
but I'm not going to because I could just go in. But then at the end of the day, when your arrogance, when your ignorance overshadows your arrogance, you need help. And like you, and a lot of you guys need help. So I'm out of here. Have a good day. Peace.